Hello everyone, welcome to another Lightroom tutorial. In this video we will be creating a very dreamy, colorful sunset image with lots of glow and much more details in the shadows. If you want to follow along, you can find all the raw files in the description of the video. And now, let's begin. Okay, let's get through this quickly. First off, I'd like to change the profile to Adobe Standard. This will already raise the shadows a little bit as you can see, so we get more details in them already. Next up, I do want to bring up the exposure. I'm going to bring it up quite a bit. Of course, this will lead to overexposure, especially in the sky, but we also get much more details back in the shadows, which is exactly what we want. Now, to fix the overexposure, I can start by bringing down the highlights. Let's just bring them down a little bit. It's looking better. We still have some overexposure, but I do want to fix that locally with a bit of masking later. For now, let's continue by raising the shadows. Again, bringing back details from the darkest parts. So that's looking so much better. At this point, due to those adjustments, we did lose a little bit of contrast. We can change that by just introducing some contrast back. Just like that. Okay. Now I think the exposure for the first adjustments does look quite good. I do want to continue by introducing a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity. And of course, I also want this image to be vibrant. So let's push the vibrance. Perfect. At this point, I just noticed I skipped over the white balance adjustments. And of course, for this shot, that's kind of a big deal. So let's do that real quick. For this shot, I want to try the auto setting, which should work pretty good. As you can see, this will make the whole image a little warmer. And it also kind of reduces the magenta color cast. So that's working pretty good with the auto setting right here. At this point, we can focus on the masking and do some local adjustments. So let's head into the masks menu. At the moment, the biggest problem lies in the sky, which is way too bright for the rest of the image. So let's adjust that a bit. For this reason, we do have a pretty clear edge between the sky and the landscape. So we can just use a sky mask right there. Then once we have the selection, let's bring down the highlights and I'm going to bring them down all the way. That's already looking much better and also Neat little bonus here is on the bright part on the left side, we get this very cool looking glow effect. So it appears the sunlight is coming over the cliffs, kind of like a light bloom effect, which I really, really like. Also, I do want the sky to be a little more saturated. So let's push the saturation. All right, that should be enough for now. Next up, I do want to work on the top part of the sky, which I want to further darken. So let's use the linear gradient. Uh, maybe like this. I think that looks good. Of course, I don't want to affect the glyph side on the right side. So I'm going to subtract with the brush and I'm making sure to check the auto mask box right there. So I just have an easier time masking this part out, as you can see. All right, that looks pretty good. Now with that mask, let's just bring down the exposure. And thus I'm just adding some more contrast overall to this image. I think it looks much, much better. We could adjust the size of this linear gradient a bit to not make it too obvious. All right. Then, of course, I'd like to add some glow on the left side. Therefore, as usual, I'm going to use radial gradients. So first off, let's create a smaller one like this. I do want it to cover the cliffs a little bit. This is looking good. Now in here, first, of course, I'm going to push the blacks. This will add the glow effect, but this area is very, very bright. It's actually quite overexposed. I do want to fix that. So again, I'm bringing down the highlights. This helps a bit, but not too much. So I'm also going to bring down the exposure. And I can drop it quite a bit, just like that. And it immediately looks better. So still, I do want to introduce some more temperature in here. So let's push it a little bit, 
to just give this glow effect a warmer color tone. All right, awesome. Looking good so far. Then let's add one more radial gradient. This time I'm making it a little bigger. Again, placing it somewhere here and then push the blacks for some extra glow. Perfect. And that's it for the local adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see we have much more details in the shadows. We have some nice glow effect on the left side. The sky looks just much better overall, but the colors still look a little bit weird. So let's work on them. For the color grading, I'm starting in the HSL tab. Uh, let's begin with the hue. Here, I do want to bring down the orange hue a little bit. I also want to bring down the yellow hue, which will mostly affect the lights in the foreground. And just make them a little more orange. All right, that looks good. If you are looking closely in the sky, you can see a very slight purple color cast still. And that's not something I'm aiming for. So I'm going to drop the purple hue and thus make the sky a little more bluish. I can further work on this effect by bringing down the blue hue. And of course, this will give the sky more of a cyan color tone. All right, but that's looking good. Let's head over to the saturation. Here, I don't want to bring down the yellow saturation notch, just like that. And I also want to push the blue saturation. All right, looks good. Next up, the split toning, which probably will have the most impact on the colors of this image. Let's begin with the highlights. And of course, we want to have a warm color tone. So let's choose a hue somewhere in this range. And here I'm really pumping up the saturation to introduce a lot of warm tones to this image. Perfect. Now we can do the same on the midtones, going with a warmer color tone somewhere here. That's looking good. However, I'm not going to overdo the saturation this time. Just want to have a low amount in the midtones. And now let's head over to the shadows where we want to apply a colder color tone. All right, that's looking good. Now let's bring up the saturation a little bit. Perfect. Finally, I'm going to head into the calibration tab. Here we can do some more color grading. Normally, I just bring down the blue primary hue and push the saturation here. I'm going to push it quite a bit more than usual, but that's looking super cool. All right. That's it for the color grading. Now let's head into the details tab to sharpen this image. And here I'm pretty much always using the same settings. I'm dropping the radius. I'm increasing the details all the way up. Then I'm applying some masking. So only the important areas will get sharpened just like that. And now let's push the amount of the sharpening. Perfect. So that is pretty much it for the Lightroom raw adjustments. Usually this would be a pretty cool image, but there are a few things that annoy me, which I need to fix with Photoshop, sadly. Actually, I could get rid of those dots within Lightroom, but I just don't like the performance of the healing brush here. Also, there are some very annoying spots coming in from the lights above. Those are kind of harder to fix. But for those areas, I'm going to use a second image from which I'm copying this area. So let's head over to the second image right here. At that point, it's not edited. So I'm just hitting the previous button to apply all the previous settings. And of course, I need to further adjust this image to match the original photo, which I'm working on. And to make my life a little easier, I can toggle the reference view right here. On the left side, we have the image which I'm planning to edit. And on the right side, we have the image from which I want to use a few areas. So right now you can see we do need to adjust the image some more to fit the original shot. That means I'm bringing up the exposure to make this area brighter. And I'm just watching this area. Everything else doesn't matter to me. So the brightness does look quite good, maybe a little brighter, but the colors are still not fitting. That means I'm going to push the temperature, making this spot warmer. I think that looks good. And I'm also going to introduce some tint. So at this point, it looks really similar. 
Let's just give it a try like this. So I'm selecting the main image and the bonus image for the areas. Right click and go to edit in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. That's the main image. That is the second image. I'm going to hit Control A to select all. Then I'm hitting Control C to copy it and Control V to pass it above the original image. Then I'm holding down the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon down below to create a black layer mask. And now let's pick up the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to white. And with a low brush opacity, I'm just going to paint over all those dots I want to remove. Just like that. And you can see we can nicely get rid of those ugly spots. Looks so much better. Now back there on the cliff side, there are some more spots which I want to remove. Again, I'm just painting over it with the brush, but that looks perfect. You can see it when I'm deactivating this layer. Much better. Okay, then next up, let's merge those two layers and fix the rest of the image. Therefore, I'm using the spot healing brush, zoom in a bit and just paint over all those dots. Also, I'm using the spot healing brush to get rid of that ladder down below, just roughly painting over it like this, and the ladder is gone. Now for the rock in the bottom right corner, I am just using the lasso tool, again creating a very rough selection here. Hit Shift F5, and with the content aware method selected, I'm hitting OK. And this way we have nicely cleaned up this image. So let's check the histogram real quick. I think we could add a little more contrast by using a levels adjustment layer. So let's just apply that. Here I'm going to bring down the point for the highlights and increase the point for the blacks. And thus we added some more contrast. Okay, at this point, I really think I shouldn't add anything more. So I guess that's it for the editing of this dreamy sunset shot. I hope this video was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.